a great God yes. on today. Amen. And he is truly worthy of our prayers. Yes. Let's give God one more hand clap of praise on today. Come with me to the second epistle of St. Peter, chapter 1. Beginning with verse number 5. If you're having trouble finding second Peter, it comes right after the first Peter. <laughs> and I will be reading from the New International Version of the Bible. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. For a few moments on this morning, I want to talk to you briefly from the subject. Keep holding on to your faith. Keep holding on to your faith. It's good to know that in the midst of our imperfections and our sinfulness, God has given us everything that we need to live the right way. He's given us everything we need to live the right way through the knowledge of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior. God has given us a great promise so that we can be partakers in the divine nature. In being partakers in the divine nature, it helps us understand the idea of us transforming into the image of Jesus Christ. And due to the fact that we are transforming daily, where we should be, transforming daily into the image of Jesus Christ, we have the opportunity to escape the corruption in the world. This corruption is caused by contrary thinking. And we escape the corruption of this world by sharing in his nature and striving to be more and more like him. 
Do I got five folks that are striving daily to be more and more like the master? Well, all right now. <laughs> the king is not walking in fear or apprehension, but the key is to simply keep holding on to your faith in the midst of the unthinkable. You have to keep holding on to your faith. If you're up or you're down, keep holding on to your faith. If you feel like you have been mishandled by someone or something, keep holding on to your faith. When hope seems distant, my brothers and my sisters, keep holding on to your faith. And when the evil one tries to take you out, and believe you me, he will try to take you out. Keep holding on to your faith. The songwriter says, just keep your faith and never cease to pray. Just walk upright. Call him new day or night. He'll be there. He'll be there. There's no need to worry, my brothers and my sisters, because guess what? God never fails. See, in 2 Peter, it teaches us that the, that the grace of God transforms and empowers us as believers to walk in right relationship with him. I can pause right there. See, there's no need for us to boast on today because simply it's not about us. God has granted us his grace and his mercy so we have the opportunity to engage in right relationship with him. And the key word is right. Anybody can engage in relationship with God, but his children are to engage in right relationship with him. It behooves us on today to press our way day in and day out to live this thing the right way. Tomorrow is not promise. We need to live the right way. In the face of opposition and trying times, the grace of God leads us to living right, to loving right, and to walking right. To understand that one who is transformed has experienced a change. Y'all yes. Yes. seen the movie Transformers? Yes. <laughs> they changed from a car to a robot, man or woman. There is a change when you transform. And when we are transformed, our mind changes. When we are transformed, our heart changes. Our character changes. And our spiritual condition changes. But you got to transform. And when we are empowered by God, God has given us a sense of authority that is granted to us through his power. Yes, yes. It is not by our power. So we can't boast about it. But the believer is empowered because they are transformed through right relationship with the true and living God. But in the text, we have Peter. 
the apostle whose mouth is shaped like his foot. The apostle Peter, he lets us know, Sister Regina, that everything we need to live a life pleasing to God has already been given to us. We already have the tools to succeed. The problem is many of us don't open the toolbox. But God has already given us what we need, Lamont, to be successful. We are called to live in harmony with God's moral character. We are not to be in opposition as believers with God's moral character. So the keys to living right were given to us by the one who made us right. God's grace, the Spitz, is the source of godly living and it is the source of our strength. Hebrews 11 verse 1 states, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is not based on test evidence but on divine assurance. Do I got five folks who got divine assurance of today? Faith is a gift of God. However, Reverend Slater, we are not supposed to just sit on the gift. We are to add to the gift of faith. If you have been sitting here year after year, decade after decade, not adding to your faith, the time is now to make a change. It is up to us to do our due diligence in our daily walk with God. Every day that goes into living the good life, we already have. I can't say that enough. We have to act like we got it. Because we do got it. But the text tells us that we are to add to our faith moral excellence. So you need to put a little bit of moral excellence into your box. This means, check this out, there should be a constant effort for there to be an ethical distinction. What you say? There needs to be a moral difference in the life of the believer. People should be able to distinguish us by our character. We should not be looking like the world. The world should be striving to look like us. Because we are walking in moral excellence. There's an ethical distinction between the church and the world. We can't draw the world if our goal every day is to look like the world. But in being morally different, we must strive to attain truth. A believer must have understanding when it comes to the word of God and the things of God. We should seek to have the correct insight and understanding when it comes to understanding the truth of God. That simply means 
when we dig into scripture, we have to figure out by doing things the right way what the author's original intent was. Stop guessing. Stop taking other folks' words. We got to get God for ourselves. So that means the believer must see truth in the word of God. But not only must there be an ethical distinction guided by attaining truth, we also must be diligent to present ourselves approved to God. The key word is that the believer must be diligent. And then think about it, somebody just thought all they had to do was be baptized. <laughs> but we must be diligent. So to our faith, we must be morally different. We must attain truth. And once we attain the truth, we got to apply the truth. Somebody missed that. Every day. And when you apply the truth, you start having more and more self-control. Am I in the text? Self-control, my brothers and my sisters, is restraint over one's own impulses. The word will lead you to keep yourself in check. We have to have control over our thinking. We have to control, have to have control over our doing. And it behooves us to have control over our sayings. So again, to our faith, we must add being morally different. We must attain truth through the word of God. We must walk with self-control, but we must be determined to live for Christ. Not only must we be, be determined to live for Christ, we must walk in brotherly love and brotherly kindness. Love, right, is self-giving and a self-sacrificing attitude that is concerned more about giving than receiving. So with all that said, what is the benefit, Brother Leon, to having a growing faith? Number one, you become productive in your process that leads to your purpose. Having a growing faith leads us to become productive in our process that leads us to our God-given purpose. Being productive, thinking is ready, it leads us to carrying out the Great Commission. In order to be productive, I'll say it one more time. We got to be connected. We have to be willing to go. We have to be equipped to teach and willing to walk in obedience. If we're going to be examples that encourage all seekers, we must be connected to the correct power source. The Bible tells us that we are to be in the world, yet not of the world. Being connected leads us to being useful. I don't know about you, but I want to be useful to the master for to build his kingdom. My goal every morning when I wake up is to walk in my purpose that leads me to my purpose. The walk in my process that leads me to my purpose. 
But we have to have a million of mind that we are going to be productive. We have to have a made of mind that for Christ I will live and for Christ I will die. We have to have a made of mind that I'm going to serve the master and not serve myself. So point number one, you become productive. But number two, I like this one. You become a good tree. We always talk about the good food. But you can't have good fruit without being a good tree. That's right. I jumped out of the text. You can't have good fruit if you ain't a good tree with deep roots. Matthew. Chapter 12, verse 33, supports my argument. Even make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. My brother and my sister, we need to stop worrying about the fruit. It's not worrying about the tree. Is your tree healthy? Are the roots running deep in Jesus Christ? We got to be concerned about the tree. Are you a good tree on today? Because a good tree will produce good fruit. You become productive. You become a good tree. And not only do you become a good tree, you become a stronger tree. Well, last but not least, you begin to see clearer through the condensation of chaos. When you know that faith is the substance of things hopeful. Yes. And the evidence yes. of things not seen. Yes. And to this faith, we must act being morally different. We must seek to attain the truth in the Word. Uh -huh. And we start living the Word by walking with self control. And as we walk in self-control, we become determined to live for Christ. And as we walk being determined to live for Christ, we begin to love God more. And we love our brothers and our sisters. And when you add all this to the mix, you won't be ruined, but you will begin to see the world and your process differently. But you must wait on God. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint in the rough moments of your process. The Lord, he will renew in your times of despair. The Lord, he will renew when your body is filled with sickness. The Lord will renew when you find yourself all alone. The Lord will renew when you lose a loved one. Know that the Lord will renew in times of joy. The Lord he will renew if your body is filled with pain. The Lord will renew when the evil tries to take you out. The Lord will renew. Just keep your faith and never cease to pray. Just walk upright. Call the new Day or night, he'll be there. He'll be there. There's no need to 
the world because God he never fails. You can be confident because God never fails. You can walk in boldness because God never fails. He is your refuge and your strength. God never fails. He will help in your time of trouble because God He's your joy in the midst of your sorrow. God never fails. He's the bridge of a troubled heart. God never fails. He's the promise keeper. God never fails. He's the light in the darkness. God never fails. The song in the sand. He is my everything.